Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about the aortic arches. And these are uh, embryological arteries that occur in the head and neck region during the development of the heart and the arteries. So just to orient ourselves a little here, the heart is here uh, in the middle of this uh, heart-shaped region. The head is towards the top. And since we are looking at an anatomical view of the body, the right side of the screen is the left side of the body, and the left side of the screen is the right side of the body. So there are six aortic arches that connect a ventral aorta and a dorsal aorta. So as the name implies, um, in the uh, developing fetus stage, the blood, after it leaves the heart, enters into um, this sort of structure where there is a dorsal aorta on this side and this side, which is uh, towards the back of the developing fetus and the ventral aorta, which is towards the front. Now these six aortic arches, one, two, three, four, five, six, connect the ventral and dorsal aorta and they give rise to a number of important arteries that occur in the head and neck region. So the first two, are, uh, first two aortic arches, they disappear, but they uh, give rise to some um, other arteries. The first arch forms the maxillary artery, although the arch itself disappears. Same with the second arch, it disappears, but it forms the stapedial artery. And the third arch here, it forms the carotid arteries in the neck region, uh, both the internal carotid and the external carotid artery. The fourth arch gives rise to the right subclavian and the aortic arch. The aortic arch on the left side, which is the uh, descending aorta, occurs on the left side. And on the right side, it forms the right subclavian artery. The fifth arch, it disappears completely. You don't have to worry much about that one. The sixth one is a little bit more complicated. So proximally, which means uh, closer to the origin of the aortic arch, it forms the pulmonary arteries. So both the right and the left pulmonary arteries, while distally further away from the origin of the sixth aortic arch, on the right side it disappears, while on the left side it forms the ductus arteriosus. So there are some mnemonics um, to help us remember which arch forms which kind of arteries. So the first two, uh, they're easy, they disappear, um, you don't have to worry much about them. The third arch forms the carotid arteries. So if you remember, C is the third letter of the alphabet, A, B, C. You can remember that the carotid is from the third arch. So for the fourth arch, um, it forms the aortic arch on the left and the right subclavian on the right side. So if you think of four and aortic arch, you can remember that the aortic arch comes from the left side of the fourth aortic arch. And on the right side, if you think fours, uh, at the end of fours, there's RS, right subclavian. You remember that the right subclavian comes from the fourth aortic arch. The fifth one also disappears. Not much to remember there. And the sixth one, uh, the sixth one is a little bit more complicated. So um, if you remember that the uh, it forms both pulmonary arteries and the ductus arteriosus. So all the structures on the left side are um, maintained while only the pulmonary artery on the right side is um, persists. So those are the aortic arches. Um, hope to see you next time and uh, give us, um, subscribe to us and uh, tell us what you want us to talk about next. See you next time.